adjust my volume a little bit on the thing there, the first one there. Right beyond, down, down. There you go. That sounds good right there. Sound all right, Bill? I'm going to blast y'all out of here. Well, good morning, Elohim Christian Center good morning. of Savannah, Georgia. 5009, I'm advertising. 5009 Ogeechee Road. You can view us on www.elohimchristiancenter.org on demand, or you can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. No, I'm sorry, and Twitter or Periscope. Periscope has been brought out by Twitter, so you can watch us on Periscope as well. So we're so glad to have you with us on this. Uh, cold morning in Savannah. What was it, like 30-something degrees this morning? 37. 37? Yeah. Can I get a 34? Can I get a 34? 32. 32. 30. 30. All right. We got it. <laughs> whatever, whatever reading you had on your phone, watch or whatever, amen. We, we know it was in the 30s. Amen? All right. Come on, just make this confession. I am. I am. What the word of God say that I am? What the word of God say that I am. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I have a friend. I have a friend. I'm not poor. I'm not poor. I'm rich. I'm rich. I can make it. I can make it. I can take it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now look at the three people say, Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I want to continue talking about the uh, first fruit. Amen. Praise the Lord. About the first fruit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about um, some scriptures shows a particular return on specific uh, giving. So obedience to the plan of God demonstrate through purpose of heart in giving entitles the believer to the specific promise return otherwise unnecessary so in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and we go to start at verse 6 and say remember this then it goes on and says remember this he who sold generously and then talk about he who saw us uh, sparingly. And then, it, and then it tells you and goes on talking about purpose from your heart. There is a connection in the giving with your heart. That's why we do not want you to do empty bucket pluck it, plunking, or whatever. You need to have a purpose in your giving. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, know I know that you know that, you know that it's all about, it's all about your, heart. your heart. Yeah, it's all, it's all about your heart. It's all about your heart. It's the, it's the intent on which you give it. Amen. 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 Come on, say this to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. it's not the amount, it's not the amount. That's, in your hand, that's in your hand, but it's the amount, but it's the amount. that's in your heart. That's in your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so it's all about the giving part of your heart. Now let's go to the book of Job. I don't know if we're gonna have it on the screen or whatever. But um, oh well, I got I got okay, find me back there. You get it. Alright, Job 22. Job 22. Hallelujah. We're gonna make a vow, keep it. All I'm going to say about that. Make a vow, keep it. Amen, Pastor. You know, a lot of times we talk about the vow that you made and, and, and what you said you're going to give. Lord, I promise I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that, and you that don't word, do it. You, you break it. you breaking a vow. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get married, amen, that is a vow. That is a covenant. Hallelujah. I want to say congratulations to Shug and Rochelle. Uh, no, I'm sorry, and Rachel. Shug and Rachel uh, jumped the broomstick yesterday. Hallelujah. Tied a knot. Amen. Amen. So, uh, well, you know, because of this COVID and all that, so we're going to have people that are going to have weddings that's already got married, but they're going to want to have a ceremony. 
So, you know, we're going to be there for them for the ceremony because they can't do it now. You know, can't have all these people all up in here, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to space everybody out, you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, uh, so we gon' you know, we're going we gonna to be here for them, celebrate with them and all that good Amen. stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. So, they were... Um, I want, I, you know what? I'm going to tell her business anyway. Because, you know, th today I feel like I don't want to hold nothing. Let go. Uh -oh. I'm going to let it go. So when I start reading the vows for the vow that they're going to make to each other, the emotion got so strong with them just to hear the vow hmm. that, that they were making to each other. To hear the word, my husband and my wife brought her to tears. Got him all emotional. I could just see it in him. Like it just like it was on them. And it just showed me on how much they love each other. Amen. To be able to say, we can do this. Yes, yes. So in Job 22, uh, 22 and 27 said, You will make your prayers to him and he will hear you and you will pay your vows. So this is another form of, yeah. of how God you know the, it, when I'm going through the scripture because you know folks funny about money and um, go and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor I'm so glad, I'm so glad. You, ain't you ain't funny about your money. About your money. <laughs> I, I mean we got people that get they get real funny and funky about money, especially when it comes to church. It's a no-brainer when you go everywhere else and spend your money. But for some reason, we have the belief that the church is free. We do. Free counseling. Free how to pass and pray for your car, your goat, your boat. Huh? Come on. You know, it don't matter if you're on a goat. Eating cheese on a boat. That's Dr. Sue, y'all. <laughs> so it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it don't matter. They just think that it's just, it's just free. But you can't go to a psychiatrist or a therapist and it's free. Hello. But it's free from the men and women of God. Mm. Because that's what you believe. But you never ask yourself how they taking care of themselves. Oh, Are they right. eating? Being fed, how they getting paid, you don't you don't think about that. They have to do that themselves, and then people get offended when they say you need to pay me a salary or you need to pay me for my service. You pay the plumber for his service. Yes, come, Amen. On. Amen. come on, come on. You make a vow. Wow. You pay. Amen. So I said to myself, I said, why do God have have so many avenues of giving? Because the fact is that the avenues that he used for us to give bring certain type of blessings in your life. There's a certain return that you get when you do certain things. It's like when you give to the poor. There's a certain when you give to the poor, you lend them to God. And God, look, God ain't gonna owe you. Amen. <laughs> All right, we know about Malachi. Uh, let me let me hit up Malachi real quick, cause it, uh, why I'm thinking about. It. So so on on Job 22 and 27, mm -hmm. you pay your vow. Mm -hmm. That's what God required for you to do. Pay your vow. Amen. Amen. So here's what I believe that the promise is connected to paying the vow. It has something to do with your prayers. When you pay your vow, Amen. It got, it's connected to your prayers. Amen. Selah. No. Okay, so we know this. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, how have you robbed me? Or how have we robbed you? He said, in your tithes and contribution. Now, the tithes is different from the contribution. The contribution are the offerings. Amen. So Amen. those folks who don't know what contribution is, that's what it is, the offering. Amen. So when you tithe, you know, you don't hit that big lottery, that 400 something million, you tithe, you say, ooh, I, and you're a member of this church, you tithe. So 
live by 40 million or whatever, or however you want to do it from the net or the gross, however you do it. Um, do it folks that say, look at that, you're going to take gambling money. Uh, hey, it gets holy when it comes here. And, and, uh, and so, and so uh, on top of your 40 million that you tied to the church, uh, then you go ahead and give an offering behind that. Amen. Amen. So you know, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, maybe you know, 41 million, you know, 40 and one million, you know, Amen. 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 There was a, there was the, uh, there was talking to people. See, money make people feel good when you talk about having it outside the church, but in the church, it just it brings them down. Amazing. What? Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Come on, y'all. Wow. I'm glad we don't have that spirit here. Yeah. Hallelujah. No. No. I've been in places no. where I had to preach, and I had to preach by finding I could just see it just, just like it had let the air out the room. But they're talking to this guy, interviewing, talking to him about if he won a lot of what would he do? A couple people, some people say, oh, I would help a whole lot of people. You know, people need some help. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they know they know who to grab in front of the, you know, in front of the camera. Spoke well and all that. Grab another guy. And he said, the first thing that came out of his mouth, he said, I would help the church. Yeah. I said, I need him as a member. Mm -hmm. He said, I would help the church. That's the first thing I'll do. So see, before he gets to start giving Aunt Lulu and everybody money, he gonna, he going to make sure he take care of the church first. Then after that, he probably take care of everybody else. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about even talk about that where 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 uh, where God is um, is first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened when you lose a God first mentality? Wow. I'm gonna get to that. Not today. But I'm going to get to that. Because we lose a God first mentality, something begins to start happening. Well, I see, I'm supposed to stop me, Apostle. You're supposed to stop me. You say, well, look, Pastor, wait down. You know you're wrong. You said you need to say it right now. So let's finish, Malachi. So you, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Now, let me put a pen right there. What he's talking about here, he's talking about those folks that's under the law, not under grace. Don't you turn off and run and say, see, I told y'all you ain't had to pay no tithes. I didn't say that. Amen. I didn't say that. You still pay the tithes. And because you're under grace, you're not under the curse. Amen. I can't, you don't get cursed with a curse because you're not tithing, because you're under grace. Because see, that would be a sin. So all your sins have been washed away yeah. under grace yeah. because of the sacrifice of what Jesus has done. Uh -huh. However, however, you don't receive the blessings uh -huh. when you don't do the tithing uh -huh. because that's what's connected to the tithing is the windows of heaven will pour out blessings upon you Hallelujah. that you won't have room to receive it. Yeah. Now the yeah. blessing that he's pouring out is not just good relationship. It's not just uh, 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 making sure that your bank account stays steady. It's not that you, you're out of debt, your needs are met, you have plenty more to put in store, but it's also about revelation. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's also about receiving revelation from God. It's also about uh, no, I'm going to that <laughs> <laughs> You know, first, when I said I'm leaving that alone, you know the first thing popped on my uh, elder grab was that I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. So, 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 how are you gonna trust in you if you can't? <laughs> 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 Woo! And he goes on and said, "Go ahead, go to go to go to go to work. Yeah, there you go. Bring the full tithe, not the half. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that they may be." Food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. And if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour blessings or pour down for you a 
blessing until there is no no more, listen, need. Amen. I like this Amplified verse. There is no more need. I don't, I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need to call mama up for a couple of dollars to get some milk. Yeah. I don't need to do that no more. Yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Because God poured the blessing out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're taking care of my need. Yes. Not my one. Uh -uh. Not my one. Uh -huh. But my need. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. You might, you might want a, 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 a Tesla, but you need a car. Amen. All right. I'm just saying, you got no difference between the need and the want. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, this is what I love right here. Mark 10 and 30, mission. It said, Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution and in the age of to come eternal life. Now, when we go back into the scripture, I gotta get, I gotta go back to the beginning. I, I gotta get y'all done that. Mark. Ten. And let's get the full picture here. Now, this is the rich and the kingdom of God. So, let me see if I want to go to. In, in verse 24. I need the whole thing, but I don't. You know. Okay, so in verse 17, it says, As Jesus started to, to, to start on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he added, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You should not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not give false testimony, you should not def defraud, uh, uh, defraud, honor your mother and your father. Uh, teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor. This is mission. And give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Get that baggage off you and come follow me. So he gives him, he tells him, you're going to get mission. Now, the blessing that comes with mission is the hundredfold. All right? So am I, am I connecting the dots for y'all? Y'all yeah. getting the dots connected? Mm -hmm. All right. So... When Jesus looked at him and he loved him, he said, at that, he said, at this, the man's face failed. His countenance changed. He went from smiling to a sad face. But Jesus, Jesus still loved him. You know that, right? He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for those how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciple was amazed at his word, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, uh, a needle is a structure that they normally have in the city or right before you go to the market. And, and the way it's shaped, like this here, it's kind of like, like that. And um, the camel had to unload his stuff to walk through. Then you pick the stuff up and go back on the other side and put it back on the camel. That's all, that's all you had to do. Listen to the concept. If it's hard, it's hard for the camel to go through the iron needle, right? 
So if it's hard for the camel to go through the eye of the needle, you take the luggage off of it, let it go through, then guess what? You get the, you get the stuff on the other side. Jesus said, let it go now because you're going to have more on the other side. Y'all yeah. getting this revelation? Amen. You, you get, you release here, yes. and you receive over here. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. See, when you understand that, that this is not a loss, but this is a gain. Amen. Amen. You ain't losing nothing. You look at your bank account and say, oh, I'm minus $100, but guess what you done gain on the other side? Well, you know what? I'm 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 teaching good, and y'all amen for good too. I can tell you that right now. Y'all made me want to grab my ear and holler for him. Jesus, y'all keep y'all foot off that gas pedal. I'm gonna slow this thing down. Now he goes on, and he said, <laughs> the disciples were even more amazed and said to each other. Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Now how in the world, if they were broke, busted, if they were poor people, they would just say like, ooh, we in. So it sounds like to me, they must got a little something, something. Because why are they concerned who going to get in? Everybody got possession. Now, I might not be saying somebody rich, but everybody got a little, 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 little you know, a little something in the pocket. That's what they're trying to say. So they goes on, and Jesus looked at them and said, "With man, with or with human beings, it is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God." So guess what? There's a correlation with this. Over in Philippians 4 and 13, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory through who? Christ Jesus. Amen. Right here. I'm reading to you right here in Mark. What Paul picked up and said in Philippians. Amen. Amen. You know, some folks get funny on you, Bishop. They'll, they'll, they'll say, Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's the, you know, you know, that, 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 that's the opposite. That's, that's still the Old Testament, you know. That, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's before. That's still doing the law. So Jesus was still dealing with the law when he, he said this, because you, you had to make sure you obey this and obey that. And it, No, I just told you where is that over in Philippians 4 and 13. Amen. All I got to do is find it in one place. I found it over there. I found it under, I found it under grace. Amen. Not under the law. I found it under grace. Amen. And so then Peter stood up. We had left everything to follow you. Pastor Peter gave all that we're going to give. We got the money to get. And look where we at right now. <laughs> Truly I tell you. Jesus replied. No one had left. Now you ain't did it for me. <laughs> You ain't doing it for everybody else. You better be doing this for God. Amen. That's where I'm going with this. Amen. For either I truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no man has left home or brother or sister or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel. Will fail to receive hundred times as much in this present age. Home, brother. Sister, mothers, children, and field among the persecution and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. And I'm going to tell you something right now. That's so true right there. Listen. I may be your pastor, but y'all my brothers and sisters. Amen. Look how many more brothers and sisters I have gained. Amen. I gained some more family. Y'all yes. missing it. Y'all missing it. It's at homes. Hallelujah. I only got one right now. But 
you got a place to stay, you got a house, you got a house, you got a house, you got a house, and anytime I'm invited in there, guess what? It's like I'm at home. That's right. Because you treat me like, like I'm family Amen. when I come to your house. Amen. And when you come to my house, guess what? You at home. I treat you like family. Amen. 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 You know, so once you come and you, what, the first time you come, you know, you, you got to get oriented. Where, where the fork's at, where the spoon, where this, where that, and, and all that other stuff. And we tell you where everything at, here, here the refrigerator and all that. After that, where the bathroom at, with all that, that. After that, you just need to get going. Amen. You know, when you get up, we all sitting down and you talking, you get up. I say, I'm going to the restroom. You ain't got to ask no more. You know where it's at. Amen. Amen. When I go when I go to my uh, my uh, my uh, children's house, once I find out where the bathroom at, I just go. I know where the refrigerator at. I open the door. Amen. And if you don't have it labeled to say "Do not touch," this is mine only. And I look at it and I say, oh, "That." Bold ginger ale look good. Let me go and drink that. <laughs> and even though it's the last one, you should have said something. <laughs> Woo! Now, okay, so, so he's talking. He talked to the he talked to the rich ruler and was talking to him about mission. Then we're talking about in Philippians 4 19 ministry. And my God shall supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So my, my mission and my ministry can work hand in hand. Amen. So we give. So if someone asks you the mission that you give here on the third Sunday, that means you give it in the mission. Amen. That's what you give, that's what that's where we send that money to. Amen. 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 And those who are viewing on the third Sunday, send your mission in. So that way you'll be part of that hundredfold. Amen. And you can receive the blessing for giving the mission. Yes. And so now. I'm doing mission, and as long as you're doing ministry, now I learned this from Dr. Dr. Duplessis, first time I came into ministry. He told me money follow ministry. There it is right there, Philippians 4 19. Because if God called you to do ministry, God, <laughs> so the homie, God not saying, you don't need no money to do this. God know that you're going to need money to do certain things. And he will supply that. Amen. Hallelujah. So if God's sending me to evangelize around the world, he's going to, he's going to give me the, the finances to do it. Amen. 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 I mean, folks getting on preachers about having airplanes, the type of airplanes they got, and all this other kind of stuff, and they flying all over the world doing mission because they're trying to keep a certain time schedule, make sure they don't miss it and all that. Whatever, whatever reason. Well, guess what, y'all? Those who think they don't have, don't need to have it, don't give to that mission. Don't give to them because that's mission. Don't give it to them. Find you another mission to give it to then. If you feel that way, if you feel like they all not have an airplane, then give it to somewhere else. Yeah. But they don't give you the option to keep criticizing and not giving. Amen. 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 Yes. Find you a non-airplane preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> To give to. Okay. Give to that church. Mm. Amen. 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 So I let them know right up front. Like, I don't, I ain't so, look, if, if they wasn't meant to have an airplane, the finances wouldn't come in for them to get it. Amen. So apparently, they must need it because the finances are coming in for them to purchase it. All right, man. Amen. That's right. Yes. So sometimes you better be careful. Sometimes when you're talking about them folks, you're talking, you're talking against what God is doing. That's right. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. That's true. Let me calm down. All right. Bring it down. Get some water, Pastor. Woo, Jesus. 
Proverbs 19 and 17. Proverbs 19 and 17. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? And another thing. They just need to just mind their business. Hello. That person ain't, you ain't even a member of that person's church. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's true. Right. Yep. Yeah. Look what they're doing with the people's money in congregation. You ain't part of that church. That's right. That's called gossiping. Uh oh. oh yeah. Called slander. Uh -huh. Be mindful. Be mindful. We got to stop this, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I done got to the point and to the age, I don't even care. I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on right here. Amen. Not what somebody else is doing over there. That's between them and God. God will take care of that. Amen. I'll pray for them. You come and tell me uh, this pastor done, you know, molested some children and all that other stuff. I'm going to pray for them children that they get healing, they get to be healed, they get Amen. the right treatment that they need to overcome this, and, 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 let, and let God will be done in the situation. Yes. I'm not going to be spending all day talking about this person. So when people get to start talking about, y'all heard about uh, Reverend uh, Get Back? Child, he was over there sleeping with all the women up in church. And you go like, oh, okay, all right, just walk on off from him. Say, hey, I got to go. Let them know, you ain't dumping that on me. Amen. And I can find all that stuff on the internet. I can tell you, you can find a whole lot of mess on preachers on the internet. I'm telling you, yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just thank God I ain't on there. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? I thank God I ain't on them. Amen. So if you're looking for someone, Elohim could send it place. Amen. You busy over here criticizing because they doing all this that. Come on over here. Amen. I don't hear no jet yet. Look at him. say, see, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> All right, Proverbs 19 and 17. It says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. So God ain't going to be, listen, God, God not going to be in the, in the negative with you. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. So when you give to the poor, that's another link. Mission, ministry, and the poor, there, there's a hundredfold for the mission. Ching, ching, I got that blessing. Right? Mm -hmm. Ministry, my needs will be supplied. And with the poor, I'm limited to them because God going to pay me back. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see the correlation of how it's all connected? Yeah. Those are different type of blessings that's connected to each one of these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always like call this like, this is almost like a trifold blessing. And then Malachi 3 and 1. Malachi 3, chapter, chapter, uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. This is this. I want I want y'all to understand this here. Some folk ain't gonna like it, but it's all right. God got you. Yes, it does. So I would look at when I got when I see something ain't right, when I look at something ain't right that I ain't doing, I do what I have to do to fix it. Jesus can work it out. Yes, he can. And he yeah, does. Yeah. If you let him. Y'all remember that song? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you remember? That problem that I had. I tried and I tried, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus can work it out. Yes, he can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, he going to work this out for us. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way uh, before me. Then suddenly, the Lord, you are seeking all, you are seeking, Lord, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, said the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the days of the coming? But who can endure the day of his coming? And who will stand 
when he appears. For he is like a refiner fire and like fuller soap. He was set as a refiner and purifier of silver and will purify the sons of Levi, those are the priests, and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings and righteousness to the Lord. Come on, say, I have a righteous offering to give. I have a righteous offering to give. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as the days of old and as in the former years. It's the heart, y'all. It's the former years. That's right. Mm. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. Keep telling y'all, stop bucket plunking. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in his wages. That's a problem in America. Uh, the widow and the fatherless against those who, who thrust aside the sojourners and do not fear me, said the Lord of hosts. Now, not, the fear here is not talking about reverence. The fear here is being scared. Do not allow fear to be on your giving. Well, before I told you, money money is neither good or bad, but it's what you attach to it when you release it. Amen. Follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so if you like, oh Lord, God spoke to you, and you got two fives, and Lord said, give five off. You said, oh, I need that other five, <laughs> and you strongly hear the Lord say, give that five, and and and. You go like, no, God, I, I, they're not there. I, I, I don't know if I can get that five. And, and then all of a sudden you hear again, give the five. And now you go to give the five, and then all of a sudden the devil said, now what are you going to do to make up for that five dollars? Now, now you're attaching fear to that money that you're releasing. That's like when Jesus came over, he told, told him, he said, hey, let's go see them put the money in the, in the offering. He was, he was judging what they were doing. So when you give, give with a cheerful heart. Amen. Amen. Be glad to give. Amen. 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 So if, if, you're not, if you're not glad to give then, hold on to it till you get a glad in you. <laughs> Amen. If you don't ever get a glad in you to give, then you got to start changing the way you think about money when it comes to giving to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I've been here before. I ain't got no problem when I go online. I'm looking at, 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 at motorcycle stuff. I ain't got no problem with them looking at the price. I, ain't got, I don't have not one single solitary problem. Mm -hmm. And when I release it, I don't even I don't even be saying like, oh Lord, I should have gave it here. What I'm gonna do about some milk? <laughs> I don't be thinking about that. So I go and I shop online and everybody else, and I just I just do what I'm gonna do. Amen. Amen. But then when I come to church, I get I start getting fear when it's time for me to release something. Something wrong. That means the devil trying to stop a stop a mission. Yeah. Trying to stop a plan. Yeah. All right, so let me use about ten more minutes and I'm gonna shut it down. <clears throat> the believer must choose to respect God's order. Deuteronomy chapter thirty and verse nineteen. I'm going to do one, two, three, four scriptures, and I'm going to shut it down. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I don't think I add that on there, on that slide up there. 30. Deuteronomy 30 and 19.
set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offering or your offspring may live. See if you can put that in the Living Bible translation for me. Did it say the Living Bible or something like that, TL or something, something, something? Okay, there we go. I call heaven and earth to witness against you that today I have set before you life or death, blessing or curse, or that you would choose life, that you and your children might live. One more translation of message. It's a decision to make. Do you have, hey, uh, I'm doing I'm doing this story with 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 my um, with my. Uh, Students, I get ready to say with my kids, <laughs> my children. <laughs> Boy, they grow on you, I'm telling you, your students grow on you. And I'm um, doing this thing with, with my students, right? And what I'm, the topic is um, uh, choices, the choices you make. The choices that you make. And so I'm telling them, and they don't even know I'm, I'm preaching, speaking to preach on them. And I tell him, I said, life is choice driven. I said, what Mr. Kirkland said? Life is choice driven. All right, all right, we there, we there. I said, the sum total of, of, of what's going on in your life is based on the decisions that you have made. That's why your life is choice driven. So I gave him this story about taming the teacher. The teacher tamer. And they read this long story to get to it to figure out how they're going to. I said, don't y'all try this on me because I already know the story. <laughs> and they found, and it, it, it helped them with critical thinking to show them the choices that you make have in, in, in the story. It got consequences. But I told them, and then I went on this thing about repercussion and consequences. I said, my wife likes the word consequences. I use the word repercussion. I said, and so they googling it, putting the definitions up, to, you know, to tell me the definition of the word. God says, you have a choice here. Now this is the kind of God we serve. A God that allows you to make any choice you want to make. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Uh -huh. mm. So when people make choices in their lives and you're not going to help or you're not involved with the choices that they make, what are you worried about for them? What are you worried about choices people make that don't have nothing to do with you? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now if you, want, if you want to get a dog What am I up there upset at you and, and criticizing you and talking about you, talking about why you ain't got you a dog? You don't need no dog. I didn't hear that from God. God didn't even tell me I couldn't get no dog. Who are you? <clears throat> so here's what God said. He said, I call heaven and earth. So he said, those people in the earth and the people in heaven, I want y'all to witness this. He said, witness this now. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. That's an individual thing. He got a group that's all watching one person. I place you before, I, I place before you life and death. So here's the choice. Either you take life or you take death. Notice the order. He didn't say death first, then life. He said life and death. Not curse. But he said, blessings and, and, and curse. Blessing is a continuum. The curse stay with you. It's a flow. Blessing is a flow. 
Now, he said, he said, now, if you ain't smart enough to decide, make the decision, I'm going to help you out. He said, choose life so that you and your children will live. Now, if your children live, that means your grandchildren will live. Amen. <laughs> and if your grandchildren live, that means your great-grandchildren will live. Y'all ain't following me what I'm saying. <laughs> this is all connected to an order that God has established in the earth realm, which is a principle that we have to follow. For all you old folks that feel like you are not given to the work of the kingdom of God, you hurt yourself. When you give the pastor Carol and I, guess what? You are helping yourself. Amen. When you give to the church, guess what you're doing? You are helping yourself. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. <coughs> you know they won't they won't release the stimulus check, but I wonder how many people are gonna stimulate over here too. <laughs> yeah, them 2,000 or 1,400 coming. I want to see it. Going to be some tide coming off of that stuff. Because that's called an increase. Yeah. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. That's called an increase. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Old Testament law extensively teach about offerings. The Levites. If you are ordained, you have a nice thing to preach. In the Old Testament, you would be considered a Levite. Amen. 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 You will be a Levite. That means it's all right for me to give to you. I can sow into your life. This is the tribe of Leviticus. But thank God we're under grace now, y'all. Amen. 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 Grace. We're under grace. Now, let's, let's go to Genesis. 15 and 8. I want y'all to see here. I mean, I just, want, I just want us to respect the order. God has an order. Now, I don't know about y'all. I'm going to choose life. So, you know, I, I, this question just dropped into my spirit. Said, "Said, is there is there anything higher than one?" And I ain't gonna let you. You know, and, and the thing that's higher higher than one is God. Amen. He higher. He's higher than one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, this is having this is having the this is having a, a, a perspective of of God. Being above everything in your life. Amen. He above husband, above wife, above your boyfriend, your girlfriend, yep. your shacking buddy, above, I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> oh, y'all pray for me. I, um, you know, above all that's, all, above all, he got to be above everything. Amen. Amen. And, and look, you got to get your way to, to, to where you need to go. Amen. So let's say right now you're not, you, you know, you, you, find it, you just find it hard to tithe and, and, and all that stuff. Listen, that's why the Lord dropped my spirit and said, get rid of two debts. When you get rid of two debts, that's going to open you up to be able to start tithing. Amen. Amen. So if I can't tithe, I got something that I got to give. I got to give. Because I got to give my way out of this so I can get to, to where I need to be at. Amen. So that means that part will be on you because, you know, you, you work your way into it. You gotta, now you want to work your way out of it. 
All right, where else you got? Genesis 15 and 8. Yeah. And it goes, but he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? So he's asking, how, how am I going to possess this stuff, God, that you said? You got another verse on there? I'll just give you that one. There you go. And he said to him, bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three, three, three years old, a, uh, a ram three years old. So he's telling him, you give me this, you give me that turtle dove or a young pigeon. So he said, he said, if you want, let me cut it short for time's sake. He said, if you, if you, if you are, if you want this thing, then you gotta give me an offering. That's all he's saying. Yeah. You know, you want you want this land, I, I want I want a bet, I need a card, so. So, and when you saw it, you know, you can write on the envelope, sacrificial offering. Is that what you want to write? Sacrificial offering. For a car. Amen. For, you know, for, for a house. And you put that on there and you release it. God, this offering is unto you. Now granted, it's coming, it's coming out of here going to the bank and pay, pay the bills or whatever, you know, God allow us to do it here administratively. But that's but you get the portion based on your heart that you released it on. You get the benefit or you get the blessing from what? From the purpose on which you have sown it. All right, two more scriptures. Mark 10 and 17. And this one where Jesus had the rich young ruler and and Jesus requested an offering from him. We told him, give to the poor. And he said, and, and, and he was setting out on journey. Oh, yeah. And the rich man ran up and kneeled before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus went through the whole process to tell him what he had to do. And he said, don't commit adultery. Don't do this. He said, I have followed all the things ever since I was a boy. Uh-huh. I'm grown now. I'm a grown man. I don't know. Some, some of y'all may not remember um, <laughs> Elder McFadden, but he, he used to say that all the time. Like, kids say something to him and all that. I'm a grown man. And they, when they were real little and stuff like that. And one time, one of them said to him, I'm a grown man. <laughs> I just fell out laughing. <laughs> and, and, um, uh, so now this rich young ruler, not only he's a rich, he's young, and he's ruling over somebody. That's why he said a rich young ruler. He didn't say just a rich man. He said a rich young ruler. He want to let you know he's rich, and he's young, and he's ruling. And, and Jesus tell him, take everything you got and give the poor. He told him that's an offering. And he had great wealth, so he went away sad. Man, I won't be with you, Jesus, but... He said, you can't let your money hold, hold you back. Your money can't be an anchor for you in life. You got to gotta release that thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You might need a soul offering. You might need a soul offering today. Uh, declaring your freedom from, from money. Well, what do you mean by freedom from money? Where money rules you. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. God, I ask you to. Uh, Cause I'm who got that on. Uh, it wasn't me. Okay, not you this time. <laughs> so I was, I was like, yeah. And then I heard it over there. Sometimes when my hearing is like kind of, you know, I don't know. I pray for my hearing. You good, Pastor. You good. Amen. And so this, this, what God wants us to do is not. Be so attached to money because guess what? Poor people, I ain't say poor, poor people can have a love for money and don't even have none. That little bit they got, they love it. Uh huh. Amen. You make it, you make it eighteen thousand dollars a year, and you say I can't afford to do this and do that. You never will. You keep having that mentality. 
Got to change the way you look. My income is fixed. Change the way you think. Amen. Amen. Stop going, stop coming to God with a fixed mentality. Get your mind renewed. And do what you can do at the moment. That's how you start freeing yourself. Okay. Last one. 1 Corinthians 1 and 3. You gotta you gotta you you gonna have to now listen, you're gonna have to. Those people that mock you, you gotta to to learn how to ignore them. You gotta ignore these worldly, these worldly Christians. You know, the worldly Christians believe you don't need to give. The worldly Christians believe that that you know the preachers are not having no money. I shouldn't drive no car and, and nothing like that. So, you know, if if you know God called me to preach, and, and it's always said, don't have more than what your congregation got. This is a this is I can't find that inscription nowhere, but this is what they tell me. This is what they tell me. So, for example, if if my church is all riding bicycles to church, then I need to be riding a bicycle. I can't have no car because they're all riding bicycles. Yeah, because you know why? Because they're gonna look they're gonna look at me and say, "Oh, we must be paying him pretty good. He got a, he got a car." We riding bicycles? Oh, we need to go ahead and uh, stop giving to him because he got a car. Mm -hmm. Not the mentality that, well, if I want a car, I'm going to believe God for a car. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay in the crab barrel with you? No. Amen. No. Listen, the only way I get a pay raise, I got to come before a board. And talk to y'all and say, uh, can a brother get another nickel? <laughs> but we looking at the budget. Uh, we need to take a couple of nickels from you. Looking at the budget. <laughs> but see, on your job, you, they don't have no meetings and all that. You know, the, 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 the increase come on the job, the bless come on the job, and if the, if the owner of the company decides, he's going to say, okay, we're going to give a pay raise across the board at this amount. And then y'all get a pay raise. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all haven't had a pay raise in about three, four, maybe five years. Amen. Amen. I haven't had a pay raise in 19 years. Because I ain't on a salary. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I just strictly depend on your generosity through past the conversation. So Nobody mocks you on your job for getting a pay raise. Why are we mocking people in the church when they get a pay raise? Mm. Mm. Amen. Because right. I'm telling you, when, when we get there, when we going to get to, we gonna get there. I'm, I'm talking about, it's not if, it's when. When, yeah. when we get to where we going to get, yeah. oh, it's going to be full, they're going to be some, gonna be some full staff hiding up in here. Hey. Oh yeah, mm, yeah. Uh huh. And I'm not gonna be one supervisor. We're gonna have an administrator that gonna supervise y'all. Yes, amen. And they gonna come and make sure you doing this. You know how to do that. Get your training and all that yeah. stuff. And everything works smooth. And I can just sit right there. Mm -hmm. And when my time come, or whoever preaching that day, just grab my stuff and march myself up to the, to the podium. Yes. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. That's the vision that I have. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to be looking at the world worried about them mocking us or whatever they got to say about us. You can say whatever you want to say. Amen. Amen. And if you're a member and you criticizing, then you know, get get your thinking straight. Get your thinking straight. You ain't got to leave. Just start thinking right. Stop listening to other people poisoning you. And it says in 1 Corinthians 1 and, 1 and 3, it says, Grace to you and peace from, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So why are you concerned about people mocking you, talking about you, looking at you crazy giving all that money to the chat and giving it to that old bald head preacher up there? You are you done lost your mind. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm doing what God tells me to do. I'm gonna have peace about it. Amen. So if it so God put it in my spirit, 
Amen? Amen. To sow into my man and woman of God. Now, first of all, you, I don't even know why you're telling people what you're doing. Amen. Amen. I just don't get that part. That's just the part I don't get. I got plenty of pastors and stuff that I talk to. I don't sit around and talk to them what I'm giving. I don't talk about what I'm getting. I don't talk to them about that. You know what we talk about? We talk about scripture. We over there like theologians talk about the word and, and, and stuff like that. And then, then we might take a side note and just talk about something else. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when I sat down with, with Bishop and Bishop and I talked, sat down, had a cup of coffee, talked about it, we just talked. We didn't even talk about no salaries and get this and raise that and all. We ain't want to talk about that. I don't ask Bishop, well, Bishop, how you doing? What, how, how much you giving? I'm bringing all morning. What's that going Ain't none of that. So why are you telling people what you're doing and then allowing them to come criticize you? Mm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Child, I got, I got $10,000 in the bank and, and the Lord spoke to me and told me to give a thousand to my pastor. You sharing that with, a, with your friend. And your friend said, you don't bump your mind, your head, girl. You can give that man no thousand dollars for it. See, now you allow them to creep in and do something when you, when you know God told you to do that. God told you to do that. God told you to say, I want you to give to the church $2,000. And then you going to share it with somebody. Lord, pressed on my heart to give $2,000. And they tell you, like, what? You done bumped your head. Why would you give them $2,000 for? You know, God, God, God gave you that money for you. Yeah, he did give it to you. Now he's telling you to do something else with it. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Okay, I said that will be my last scripture. And then I'll get into the definition of the first fruit next week. Amen. Amen. All right. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. God, you are God. You're God all alone. Oh, God, how much we love you and care for the things that you do in our lives. We thank you for allowing us to have a heart of generosity. God, we thank you, Father God, that right now that I'm believing, oh God, that all our needs are met. We're out of debt, and we have plenty more to put in store. Thank you right now, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. I'm out of debt. Connect. I have plenty more to put in store. I want you to believe that. Your needs are met. You're out of debt. You have plenty more to put in store. To put in store. You're going to listen. You're going to get out of debt and you're going to be able to store. You're going to be able to save it. Hallelujah. Save it, save it, save it. Saving, saving plus interest equals growth. Hallelujah. And when you save it, you make it available to God. And he'll, he'll tell you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Don't let it be pressed upon your heart because of what somebody said, what I said. No, 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 no. You do it because he said do it. Amen. Amen. If you got convicted, then you need to go back, think about what you've been doing, and then change. Couldn't say it no better. Change. 
That's all you got to do. Just change. Now, if there's someone out there that have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want you to know that today is the day of salvation for you. And if you would just pray this prayer, those who are watching online, amen, you can pray this prayer as well. God, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus' death on the cross paid the penalty for my sin. And his rising from the dead gives me life. I trust you to forgive my sins and give me a fresh start. God, please come and live in me by your Holy Spirit. I commit my life to follow your ways, not my ways. Help me to do that. Amen. Amen. You pray that prayer in your heart today. I want to receive you as, amen, as a child of God. Welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. If you need a home church, this is the place to be. Amen. amen. Why? Amen. Because you just received, amen, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior under this ministry. Therefore, you become a part of this ministry. Amen. 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 So no matter how far you're away, amen, praise the Lord, we can always get together and connect digitally. So uh, leave a comment in, on YouTube or on Facebook or go to our website and you can leave a comment and let us know that you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We want to get some information in your hands to help you to grow into the things of Christ. Amen. Now, if there's anyone here that desire to be a member of this ministry or you desire baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence speaking in tongue, I believe that the Holy Spirit is for today and to come fill up your most holy faith. If you desire and hope, amen. And those who are watching, if you desire those things, make sure you leave a comment. We want to pray for you, and we want to receive you as a member of this ministry. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you, and we love you. Amen. 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 Good, good, good information. Amen. 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 So the word comes and brings faith with it. <laughs> and we yes. have that our neighbors and yes. our friends steal it from yes. us. Because yes. they would try to do that. Amen. Yes. Put that doubt in there. Oh. Trying to take your blessing. <laughs> we can't let them do that. Amen. If you get the word, you believe it for yourself. Glory to God. You meditate on the word of God and see what God says to you behind the word. Amen. 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 And you can see the blessings, you know, those that have been in the faith for, you know, many years. You see how God has, how the blessing is upon your life. I mean, we're not giving God to get the blessing. We give to God because we are blessed. Amen. His word said we are blessed. And I was just sitting back down to read this before I get into you know, the other thing. It says, out of 1 Chronicles 29, it says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory through his name, bring an offering, and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So when we come and we give, it's a part of our worship to him. Yeah. Not just our praise and tell him how good he is, how awesome he is. But when we give up our heart, when we give up our life, it's a part of worship. You know what we believe? Your money represents what? Life. Your life. And when you give it, you're laying down your life for your brother, your sister, for someone else to receive the word of God so their life can be changed. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, when we give our offering, we give a part of our life to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at it that way. It's a good thing. I come before him and I worship him in the yes. beauty of holiness and I give him an offering. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. All right, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Now, we don't read this, like I said, to get you to give. But for those who don't know, this is information for you and why we give. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. It says, remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. Um, if you're... Anyway. Amen. Right. He who sows generously... That a blessing may come to someone will also reap generously and with a blessing. That each one gives as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves. He takes pleasure and prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. Your heart has to be in your giving. 
If you're sowing aggressively, you're just throwing it in the bucket. You don't want to give it, but you give it anyway. The, the ministry's going to be blessed because you're taking your orphan into the ministry and work. But you're going to cut off. Choke off your blessing because of that. And God is able to make all grace and with favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance yes. so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to acquire no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation as it is written he the benevolent person scatters abroad he gives to the poor his deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever and God who provides seeds for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in acts of goodness, kindness, and charity. Thus you will be enriched in all things and in every way so that you can be generous. And your generosity as it is administered by us will bring forth thanksgiving to God for the service that for the service that the ministry of this one renders does not only fully supply what is lacking to the saints, God's people, but is also overflow of the many riches and many cries of thanksgiving to God. When you give, people will be overjoyed and say thank you that we're here, that they may receive the word, that their lives may change, and their thinking may change, that they may change, start thinking the way God wants them to think. Start thinking in line with the word of God. And we all have some erroneous things about, you know, why we should give and how much we should give and who we should give to. But when we get into the Word of God and we let God's Word minister to us, He gives us the truth about how His Word works and why we should give. Because we love God and we want to see people's yeah. lives change. Yeah. Amen. That's the bottom line. Amen. Amen. We want to see people's lives change, so we give. Because we love God. And we bring an offering to Him. We bring part of our life to Him. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we have another opportunity, Lord God, to sow into your kingdom. We thank you, Father, that you have provided, Father, for us. And when you, when you provide for us, Father, we provide in exchange of bringing our offering, bringing our tithes and our offering to your house, oh Lord God, that they may be meet in your house, oh Lord God, that people will come in, Father, from the north, south, east, and west and have their hearts and their minds changed and renewed to the word of God, that they may live an abundant life, Father, in you, loving, them, loving you, loving themselves, and loving others, Father. We thank you, Father, that we are part of the body of believers that are helping to make it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hold up your offering. Say, I am a steward. I'm returning back to you, Father. But you have entrusted to me. Father, it all belongs to you. And I'm returning it back to you. For your kingdom use. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you were using giving the uh, the giving joy. The app was down, so you might need to try it again. But I think everything else is working. All the other apps are working. The kiosk and all that. Amen. So God was trying to do it earlier. So go back and get it. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.